Well, the fact is there is no bob there. In fact, after conception, the fertilized egg can split into two and, and be two, uh, develop into two fetuses. It can split into two and then merge back into one. Now, cells can't do that. You don't see a friend of yours walking down the street and splits into two or goes back into one. It doesn't happen. No, because cells aren't mystical like that. Cells are formed by the brain. They're formed by experience and by language. Um, they're formed by a, a, a body which becomes able to control itself and by interaction with the world and, and a, an introduction into a set of codes which allow us to, to begin to form a self. A self is completely if you get hit in the head in a certain way, if your brain is disrupted in a certain way, your self will cease to be. Uh, of course, once you have been a self and you become a vegetable, and you become essentially dead, your brain doesn't work anymore. Uh, we have again there some, you know, how do we interpret? Uh, it's a little bit more difficult to deal with, I think, because you've got someone who who you've got a body which was a self and so that body is still there sort of resonating with the sense of that self that was definitely there whereas with a baby or a fetus you, no self has ever been so with, in the case of abortion you're not killing anyone uh, because no one has ever developed in that body you're losing a, a body in which uh, a self might have um, developed but, you know, as with the choice of whether you want to get pregnant or not, whether or not you want to pursue a pregnancy, pursue that potential that starts in you, uh, that's your decision legally. You don't have to pursue that. And if you don't pursue that, you are not uh, murdering someone because no one is there. Um, it, uh, it, What you're doing is stopping a physical process, uh, a physical process which, if everything went right, may in a number of months or about a year lead to the beginning of the development of the self. Uh, I think it's really nice that, that women, uh, uh, women have always seemed to want the option uh, uh, to, to choose whether or not to, to pursue uh, uh, the potential, you know, of a pregnancy, and uh, I think it's really great that now they have that option, and and many women that I've known throughout my life have exercised that option, had an abortion, and been able to, to markedly improve their their life, their, uh, and, and their children's lives ultimately, uh, based on that that power that they have to to keep control of their own bodies. Um, so, you know, when we look at our culture, why does this happen? Why does a woman abandon a baby like that? Well, I think the thing that, one of the main things that comes to mind is, is, is this, having been in this area for a little while now and, and hearing all the, the anti-abortion misinformation and, and the attempt to create guilt and to control the bodies of women uh, in this area. You're going to get, when somebody gets pregnant and they don't know what to do about it, instead of just, uh, if they didn't, if they can't handle a baby, why have a baby then? Just have the abortion. That's what, in the best case scenario, would happen. But here, because you've got a young woman who no doubt felt the great pressure uh, uh, from the one side, uh, uh, pressuring her not to uh, do anything about the situation she's in, um, making her feel like, and she obviously did not know what to do, so did nothing, and when doing nothing led her to, to a, 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 a more damaging to herself and to society to have to see uh, um, uh, a fetus in a toilet, uh, you know, it just led to an awful thing. And it's simply because this woman never felt empowered in her life to, to take control of her own body and to do what she wanted to do. Uh, she clearly did not want to have a child. Uh, 
the other downside of this type of pressure is that you get a lot of women having children because again they feel like they have to and they keep the children but they don't want the children and they don't have uh, a, a circum they don't have circumstances in which they can uh, raise a child well so you get I mean, America is, is on many levels of its poverty you get horrible situations of women who have children they don't want and can't handle, aren't equipped to handle. Um, so it's a, it's, a, it's a constant ongoing battle to uh, uh, attempt to allow women to have some power uh, in, in this country. Um, we've taken the step to make abortion legal as it is everywhere else in the world. Uh, everywhere else in the world that, that has any respect for for a, a scientific uh, understanding of things. Um, and that's a step, but at the same time, it's, a, it's still a constant battle because you've got the, 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 the conservative powers attempting to conserve, conservatives conserve, and what they're attempting to conserve is the, or the, the uh, age-old control over women's bodies, uh, men who, uh, who impregnate, and they want the power to decide what then happens. There is no, you know, uh, if a woman has no choice, then, you know, the limit a woman's choices has always been the, the agenda of the patriarchal uh, system that's been in place in this country. And so, with abortion legal, You've got the, the, you know, obviously these, this uprising against uh, the legality of abortion and and uh, the kind of myths that are developed by the conservative people, people who want to uh, put women back uh, in their place, have to take, uh, make certain that they do not uh, develop certain powers uh, in their lives. Uh, yeah. Let me just read this, this thing again. Give us this day our daily moth. Grant that our visual lures, scents, and nectars will attract beetles and earwigs galore. May our traps spring quickly, and may the meals ensnared within lead to profuse flowering. Amen. Amen. Well, they're just frail human beings, just probably thinking they're trying to help. Maybe they think they're protecting someone, or maybe they think they're helping you. That's been the argument all along, and it's an argument now of a people in a country who have the largest prison system ever invented on Earth. And more people that's, in prison that's than... That's not about... That's not the people in prison. That's not about Christianity. That's about corporations. I think corporations that, that the enormous amount of wealth that is in the hands of very few people is responsible for a lot more evil than um, anybody's religion. Except, I mean... Right. But I think the two are quite tied together. That if you didn't have the justification for it, if you didn't have that justifying worldview structure that that says um, uh, white male power is essentially good Christian power and the, the uh, um, and it's a diversion also I think because the, the, the re for instance what you just said is something that nobody would have, hardly ever says on in the media or even in our daily lives, people don't recognize that all these poor people are in prison because of corporations. They don't realize that. Why don't they realize that? Because you have a Christian explanation in place, essentially, for why people are in prison. Why are people in prison? Because they did something wrong. They did, they're evil. If they were not evil, they would not be in prison. That's the explanation. If that explanation is taken out, then we have to start to look at what the real explanation is. Uh, if you're if you're raised in a community that has is is 
filled with drugs and ho hopelessness and violence and, uh, and then and w what is caused poverty is the real cause but we can't look at that so long as we have in place this kind of shabby rhetoric for understanding behavior which is good and evil you know why are you not in prison because i'm good i'm a good person why are you in prison you you clearly did something wrong you see that like in in that film uh, what do you call it the billy bob film not the first time <laughs> No, the recent one with Halle Berry. Uh, Monsters Ball. Monsters Ball, yeah. The, the guy, why, why are you being put to death? I'm bad. We never I'm find out what bad. happened. That's exactly. The that's that that's the point, you know, is that they, I think they intentionally left it that way. Bad. It's just badness. Who made that movie? I don't know. We need to find that out. But you know what? It's unfortunate that um, there, are, there are other things that are evil besides... I mean, there are... Lots of hierarchical structures are evil, and most of the ones that are the most evil are the ones that are selfish, and they're tied to wanting to maintain, usually capital, at the expense of other people, and use other people as wage slaves and things like that. And we're lucky because, and that, I mean... Because we aren't the slaves. Well, we are. But we're <laughs> I'm not. not. That, well, I'm a bit of a wage slave. Sure, get, a, get a bigger picture here. I mean, you look at the globe, you understand that, that, yes, you're right, that this whole capital system stretches to every part of the globe now. And as far as we stand in it, we're, what, 96% oh, yeah. probably? We're literate, we have freedom, we have a video camera, you have access to cable TV. I mean, we have good food, good air, good water. Right. So you can start with the basics. Right. Uh, yeah. and, uh, and we're not... A you know, job. Right, exactly. We're, we're very, very lucky. But there are a lot of people, uh, the, the top 1% or 2% who probably see us as puny wage slaves. And they don't ever think about the people who don't have decent water to drink and who are dying of starvation right now. So, I mean, despite somebody calling you evil or, or the pro project evil, um, you're really quite fortunate. You have a lot of freedom. And yeah. so what difference does it make if they call you evil? They do have that. Well, I, I'd agree with you, and I'd agree that the, the point is to if we're to, to like, uh, we need to redirect the, the conversation and say, if you want to talk about evil, there is evil in the world, and that, and you're evil, evil, but, but it's not something mystical, like, it's not a personal behavior thing, like, if you want to, like, uh, go and have sex with three people at one time.